to be together with you. We are in the final week of a series that we've called Square One. We have been going through a letter that we typically call the Book of Ephesians and looking at some of the things that maybe we've picked up along the way, um, baggage that we're carrying, things that um, are really kind of weighing us down, and we're going to take those things off and just take a look at our foundation. What are, what are the things that we're building our faith on, and are, is that the right thing? Um, because if the foundation's whacked up, then the house probably isn't going to stand. So um, that's what we've been doing, and we've been doing this for eight weeks now. This is the ninth week, which is, I think, might be the longest series I've done. I don't, I don't recall doing one this long. Um, so I've been kind of jarred by how long it's gone. But if you haven't been here for any of that, like that's okay. If you want to know what we're uh, building our faith on, here's kind of our big ideas that we've explored. And I want you to listen as I, as I just go through these real quick. Listen for who the one is, who's the one who's doing the work, all right? Would you, would you listen for that? God picked you to be in Christ for his purpose. God picked you to be in Christ for his purpose. We work hard to journey together because Jesus is paving the way. Jesus is our only source for true life and purpose. Jesus meets our greatest need before we know we need it. God alone strengthens us to grasp his great love. Jesus grows us to care for his most precious investment. Walking with Jesus means we trust him when he warns of danger. A family following Jesus walks his path of humility. Who's the one who's doing most of the work in, in, those, in those big ideas? There's not a trick question. Jesus, God, like if we're going to build our faith on the right foundation, it starts with not anything that we've done. Uh, it starts with everything that God has done on our behalf. Like That's the starting point. Um, I don't have the strength to actually cross the boundary to make myself right with God. I have to rely on God to come here uh, and to build a bridge, build a way for us to go. And that's what Jesus did. He came and he laid his life down as an example for us. And the, the foundation of our faith is that work that he has done. Like that, if we build on anything else, we're wasting our time. So that's really the thrust, uh, the gist of the book of Ephesians, if you will. Um, and today, we're going to see that Jesus shows himself strong as we dress in his character. This passage is one that um, you might have heard off and on if you've been around church at all. Um, and it kind of usually just stands by itself. So I don't think, you know, if you didn't get any of the stuff I've already said, like we can start here. And uh, this will all kind of hang together. But for those of us who have been with it, I, I really want for us to see that this isn't just dropped in out of the blue, like it actually is connected to the other things that we've been talking about together. So as we begin all of that journey, uh, let's pause together and we'll pray. It's our habit as Neighborhood Church to pray the disciples' prayer together. Um, and I'd invite you to pray together with me. If you'd like to pray out loud, the words are on the screen. But at the very least, would you bow uh, your hearts together with me and let's begin our week um, before our Father. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Well, let's go ahead and navigate to the letter of Ephesians. If you want uh, to follow along, it'll probably be helpful to you. Uh, if you want to use the blue Bibles, they're kind of tucked up the chairs uh, in front of you. We're going to be on page 1220, 1220 in the blue Bibles, Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, page 1220 in the blue Bibles. Now, this is a letter. It was written to a group of Christians um, in a city called Ephesus. It was written by the pastor who started the church, who had been away for a number of years and is writing back to them to encourage them because they have heard uh, that he's been in prison. He was out preaching the gospel. He was out preaching the good news, telling people about Jesus. And there, were, there was enough hostility to that message that he now is in jail. 
So obviously, if you hear that your pastor has been arrested, you're going to be concerned about that. He writes a letter to them to try to encourage them. Hey, this isn't like this actually isn't a problem for me. Uh, this is actually going to serve to, to advance the gospel. Um, and so we're reading somebody else's mail, and we're reading the conclusion of somebody else's mail. So if there's something here that's confusing, maybe it's tied to something else, but I'm going to try and bring all those threads together. Let's read. I'm just going to read those first uh, couple of verses. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. I'm going to start in verse 10 because it starts, finally. Okay, so we're at the end. All right, we ready? <laughs> finally. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. I'm going to pause there. So we've done this exercise together that I've just called the gist, where we take the words of the text, and we want to underline the words that are helping the, helping the idea move forward. And so this isn't an exact science. It's just sometimes when preachers get to talking, they stick a bunch of extra words in there. And so if we can get see through the extra words to the ones that kind of matter, then that would be helpful. Um, so these are, this is the one that I've kind of developed uh, for this week in this section. Be strong in the Lord. Put on the whole armor of God that you may stand against the devil. For we wrestle against the spiritual forces of evil. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may stand firm. So, um, knowing what battle we're in actually gives us a whole lot of clarity. Um, if you are kind of walking into a room and all of a sudden people are shooting paint at you, you might be really, really confused. Unless you walk into the room knowing that you're walking into a paintball field right? Like if, if you walked in the door here and we started shooting you with paint, like that would be unsettling, right? Yeah? If it's not, like that could be a lot of fun. So, okay. If you walk, if you walk into a room, and, and, but you know, like on the other side of this door is an arena. And when I open these doors, I make myself a target. And so I come in, presumably dressed to get shot with paint, right? You, you, so knowing what battle we're in actually gives us clarity to the context of what's happening. Um, if we don't expect a battle, then we're going to be unsettled when suddenly people are shooting at us, right? But knowing that there's a battle uh, gives us that kind of a clarity. So Paul here at the end is saying, hey, you need to know that we're actually in an ongoing battle. It doesn't look like it. It just looks like you're going to work. It just looks like you woke up and you're, and you're like dragging yourself to the coffee pot and you're hoping you get the right ratio so you can get that caffe Like it just looks like normal life, right? But what Paul's saying here is that there actually is a spiritual battle that's going on, that our, our, our battle, our struggle is not actually against flesh and blood. It's not against our spouse. It's not against our children. It's not against our boss at work. Our battle is actually against the spiritual forces at work in the world. Unfortunately, we don't have eyes that can see that, right? Like, I don't, I don't wake up in the morning, and most of the time, I'm not, like, seeing angels in conflict around me. Maybe that's just me. Uh, if you can see that, then I'd really like to have a conversation. That could be fascinating. But most of us don't have eyes that can perceive the conflict that we face. Most of the time, we're just stuck with symptoms. Um, if you're in the medical field, like, you know that you, the thing that people come to the doctors for is because they can identify symptoms. I'm having this problem. This thing isn't working right. But, if, but you can sometimes address the symptoms, but it doesn't fix the problem, Right? So what's the cause of the disease? We oftentimes can see the, the result, the symptoms of this spiritual warfare, but not often do we actually draw ourselves back to seeing the cause of it, that there's something at work behind the scenes that I can't see, but is actually having a real impact on my life, right? So... Um, this is actually not new information. If you've been tracking through the book of Ephesians, he's, he has alluded to this in a number of different places. Um, in chapter 1, verse 10, chapter 1, verse 22 and 23, uh, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5. Like He has brought up the fact that there are things going on in the background. 
that Jesus is saving people, but he's not saving people, one, because they're good. He's not saving people because, um, because he wants to, um, I'm, I'm not, I can't think of another example. The reason he's saving people is because he is showing himself and who he is to an audience that we can't see. When we read words um, like uh, against the rulers, I'm in verse 12, but against the rulers, the authorities, the cosmic powers over this present darkness and spiritual forces of evil, when we read rulers and authorities, we're probably thinking of like government officials. But for, for the people that he was writing to first, they would actually hear angel language in that. When you talk about the, the rulers and the powers and the authorities, you're actually, those are actually classes of angels that they would, they would be pretty familiar with. For us, we're like, it just, <laughs> just sounds like the government to me. But, but, but he's saying, no, 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 these are, these are actually like spiritual forces, that the things that are happening on the planet are, are things that are related to things that are going on behind the scenes. That's, man, that's a lot of words. I don't, I'm afraid we've lost you already. There's, there's a story in scripture. Um, there's a guy named Jacob, and he's on the run. He cheated his brother. His brother's trying to kill him. And he's out, he's, he's sleeping, and he's got a rock as a pillow. Like, that's how rough life is. He's sleeping on a rock, okay? Out, out in the middle of nowhere. And he wakes up in the middle of the night, and he sees, he sees angels going up and down on a staircase or on a ladder. And from that moment, he starts a walk with God. What do angels on a ladder mean? <laughs> like, what, what's going on? He's seeing that there's a spiritual connection to the life that he's living on earth. He's seeing that the choices that he's making in relationship with his brother are actually related to spiritual matters and that those things are not like in another realm, but they're part of the same reality that we live in. And oftentimes we operate as though like all we have is this physical world and we can't figure out why the math doesn't add up. And the math doesn't add up because we're forgetting we have a soul. So at the beginning, he says, hey, I, I want you to be aware of this and I want you to be strong in the Lord, um, and, and, and in the strength of his might. Like, here's what's, if I start talking about demons and Nephilim and Rephaim and all of the, like, crazy stuff that happens, like, we can get pretty overwhelmed by that. And so even as Paul tells us, there's this stuff going on in the background that you need to be aware of that's actually opposing the work that God's doing in your life. I can get overwhelmed by that, and I can start to get flustered. But he says that in the phrase where he also says, be strong in the Lord. God can see it. I don't have to. Be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might, not in my ability to overcome demonic forces and, and the spiritual powers of this present darkness and the, coming from the heavenly places. I don't, I'm not equipped to do that. That's above my pay grade. I don't, I don't know how to handle some of that stuff, but I'm not standing in my own strength. I'm standing in the strength of the Lord and the, and the strength of his might. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand firm. You know what's interesting about this? He says, I want you to get dressed and I want you to stand there. Stand firm. Stand. Stand, 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 stand. He says it four times. We've read four verses. He says four times in four verses. Stand. I'm telling you, there's all this stuff going on and the instruction. Well, all I need you to do is I just need you to get dressed and I need you to stand there, please. Get dressed, be prepared, and show up. Um, it's often that God's battle plan doesn't involve much fighting on our end. I, we read together from Exodus chapter 14, um, an instance where God shows up to Moses in a really crisis situation, and everybody's freaking out because it's obvious that we're all going to be obliterated. And God says, hey, sh -sh -sh. I'm going to fight for you. Just be quiet. And that's one instance, but there are many instances. As we read through the way that God has interacted with his people in the past, there's many instances where he says, you just, just show up. Just put your armor on and show up. I just, need, just stand there. Don't get in my way. Don't try to help me. I just, just stand there, okay? You just stand there, right there. Don't move. Stand. Stand firm. But I want to help. No! Just stand there. The parents are giggling. Y'all know. <laughs> Get dressed, be prepared, and show up. Now, here, here's, here's the thing. He says, 
we wrestle with these things. I, I like to think that these things are far off and that maybe the enemy is like uh, driving drones in to strike me, but he says that we wrestle with these things. This is not just like a, a conflict that's happening somewhere far off. This is close combat. Like he's up in your business. He's smelling your pits. And so this is actually like a real conflict that we're in, and it's an intimate conflict. But in that intimate conflict, whatever we are wrestling with, he says, I need you to stand firm in my strength. Just stand there. And what do we stand firm on? What's, what's the ground that we stand firm on? Hmm? The rock? A rock, yeah, we stand firm on a rock, on a good foundation. Um, currently, I'm flashing back to Jesus saying, if, you, if anyone hears my words and does them, he builds his, rock, his house on a, on a solid foundation. The, where I went earlier this week was, um, as Paul prays for these people, as he prays for the people he's writing to, he says, I pray that God would help you to be rooted and grounded in the love of God. Like, rooted and grounded. Like, that sounds like a thing to stand firm on. Like, I can't, can't do anything if I'm rooted here, Right? So I pray that you be rooted and grounded in the unknowable love of God, that he would gr increase your knowledge of the thing that you can't actually wrap your head around. I think that's fascinating. So, church, neighbors, will we trust Jesus when he warns us of unseen danger? I can't see it. It can't affect me, right? Mm. Can't really see the wind, but... It came through this week, eh? Picked up enough sticks to know that things that I can't see can impact my life. Well, we trust Jesus when he warns us of unseen danger. And here's what I hope that we walk away with, that Jesus shows himself strong as we dress in his character. Jesus shows himself strong as we dress in his character. Let's continue reading together uh, in verse 13, Ephesians 6 and verse 13. Therefore... So because of all of that, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Verse 14. Stand, therefore, again, having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace, in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints, and also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel for which I'm an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. So uh, Paul, you know, he's a preacher. He's got a lot of extra words, and he's painting a picture of a soldier standing in armor. And as he does that, he identifies different components of his faith. So the gist of this is stand, therefore, in case you missed it, stand, therefore, having trust. Is that what I meant to say? Truth. That should be truth. Having truth. <laughs> stand, therefore, having truth, righteousness, peace, faith, salvation, and the word of God. Praying in the spirit. Keep alert. Making supplication for the saints and for me to proclaim the gospel boldly. So, stand, get dressed, and stay awake. <laughs> Sounds pretty simple. Then not always so simple, <laughs> right? Um, so the pieces, like, when I, every time I've seen this, like, there's some kind of illustration of, like, dressing in armor, and you've got, you know, the helmet and the truth and, and all this kind of stuff. And, like, we, I get fixated on the pieces of the armor. But as I went through the gist, like, the thing, the thing that I wanted to, us to see is that he's not so concerned about the pieces of the armor. That's a picture to help us understand the character that he's describing. It's the truth and righteousness and peace and salvation and the word of God and praying. Like those are the things that are actually the focus of what he wants us to focus in on. The armor is a pretty cool thing. It's cool to look at, but it's not actually the thing that we're supposed to be captivated by. 
And uh, if you got a bulletin today on the back of it, I gave you a list, and you'll see on that list truth and righteousness, peace, faith, salvation, the word of God, and prayer. And there's in those in those brackets there are a bunch of references. And I just want you, I put those there so I don't have to say them. Um, But I want you to see that these components are things that he has already talked about in the letter. If we want to talk about building our life on truth, he's talked about that. And so when we put our belt on, our belt of truth, then then we're ready, right? Uh, The church sometimes gets caught with its pants down when it doesn't put truth on. And righteousness and peace and faith. Um, And righteousness there, I don't think is talking about like righteousness for salvation because salvation is listed as a separate thing. I think maybe he's talking about like right choices, making good choices. Um, He's talking about uh, wisdom, uh, walk in wisdom. Peace, we know that Jesus has proclaimed peace to those who are far away and to those who are near, that, that he's the mystery of God is that he's making peace with people that are enemies of God. And salvation, salvation shows up in every chapter of the book. Everywhere you turn, he's talking about salvation. Put on your helmet of salvation. When does a soldier need their helmet? When is a soldier tempted to take his helmet off, maybe is a better question. Nobody's shooting right now. This just kind of makes me hot. And I'm not saying that we can take our salvation off, and I'm saying that there's a time where I think, man, this thing's just getting in my way. This whole following Jesus thing is just kind of getting in my way. Like, why do I have to, like, love my neighbor? Why do I have to love my enemy? Like, what, what is it? Like, it feels like this is just an inconvenience, and we're tempted to be like, I don't really want to live that way. And that's when we, you know, catch something with our head. The word of God, the sword of the spirit is the word of God. It's probably actually uh, the, the word for sword is a short sword, a Roman so- short sword. And so it probably was more a defensive sword. Like you don't, this is a close combat thing. It's not what you're attacking with. It's something that last case, you pull that out and you're going to defend yourself. So it's real close quarters combat type deal um, and, and prayer. So these things to me sound like the character traits of our Savior, don't they? Like, the thing he's asking us to to wear is his character. And sometimes, like, I put that armor on and it it doesn't feel like it fits, right? It's like, I don't know, I don't know that I know how this whole righteous thing works, righteousness thing works. Like, am I actually making wise choices or, like, I'm not really sure. Like, this doesn't feel like it fits. And I'm trying, I want to be dressed in, in how you've got me dressed, but... I'm not sure that it fits. And this is a theme that we've seen in this letter too, that I just want you to get dressed. Like the way that you were dressed before was actually weighing you down and now you can dress in my righteousness and you're free to make good choices. Like you can now make good choices, which I think is an incredible freedom to have. He's dressing you in his clothes. So when he tells you, wives submit to your husbands or husbands loves your wives, He's saying, dress in my clothes. I'm I'm worried about making you holy, not necessarily making you happy. It's It's not, are you comfortable? Because we're on a battlefield. Like, I don't, if our concern is to set up the air condition in the trench and not to put our helmet on, like, our priorities are mismatched. Or, we have not yet understood that we're in a conflict. We walk around life like, um, you know, everything's going to be hunky-dory. And then we're surprised when people start shooting at us. Get dressed. Be prepared. Show up. Don't forget. (laughs) Not asking you to do anything, but stand. 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 Then he says, pray. Wartime communication. Like, hey, uh, this is what's going on on the ground. I know, like, you're omnipotent or you're omniscient. You know everything that's going on, God. But I just want you to know, like, this is what it looks like from my standpoint. Am I, am I reading this situation right? No, 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 no. You're missing. There's this other thing that's happening. And you can trust me when I give you commands to stand there that you're not going to be overcome because you're standing in my strength. But I'm not quite sure because it feels like the enemy's coming down pretty hard. And it seems like they've got, they've got a power that can overwhelm me. And he says, well, I think you're a child of the light. And darkness has no power over the light. It cannot 
stand, it has no source, and so if you just stand there like I told you to stand there, then you're not going to have a problem. Pray for everybody that the mysteries of God can be boldly proclaimed. What, what level of confidence do we have as we're talking with people and sharing our story of Jesus? Level of confidence. I think I learned that in a math class one time, degree of confidence. But it's been helpful for me uh, if I'm in a situation. So uh, I used to do a, a lot of landscaping. And my boss uh, was notorious for giving me vague instructions that he ex expected me to carry out in specific ways. Does anybody have a boss like that? I love him so much. He's still my friend somehow. So he'd give vague instructions and, uh, expect, and then come back later and have very specific expectations that I didn't know about but I clearly should have interpreted. Um, and so I, he would give me these vague instructions and I would look at him and say, look, I've got about a 40% degree of confidence that I understand what you want me to know. And he'd be like, really that low? I'm like, yeah, I'm real dumb. Can you just go with it real slow? <clears throat> what degree of confidence do we have with uh, telling our story of, of Jesus. Because people sniff that kind of stuff out. If somebody's just saying something that they heard from somebody one time four weeks ago, like their degree of confidence is real low. You don't actually believe that. You're not actually bought in to what you're trying to tell me. What's our, what's our degree of confidence? That the story that Jesus is writing in our life is actually legit. Our walk the way that we live can undermine our message. But it's, it alone is not able to proclaim it. It says, pray that I can proclaim boldly as I ought to. Jesus shows himself strong as we dress in his character. Let's continue reading. He closes with these verses. So that you also may know how I am and what I'm doing. Tychicus, the beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, will tell you everything. I have sent him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are, that he may encourage your hearts. Peace be to the brothers and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with love in corruptible. So, uh, you know, we can narrow that down a little bit more. Uh, Tychicus, who's a guy that you don't know, but he's probably the male person that brought this letter. Uh, he also is seen as bringing the letter to uh, Colossae uh, that we know as, the Col as Colossians. It says, Tychicus will tell you how we are and encourage your hearts. Peace, love, faith, and grace be to all who love Jesus. Now, I want to show you something, and I've got a couple of purposes here. Uh, this is not an actual Roman soldier. <laughs> this is a picture of me. So the first thing I want you to notice is all of that hair. <laughs> so this was me in high school, and I actually had a friend who was uh, fascinated with Roman history, and so he had taken it upon himself to make a collection of like reenactment stuff, and so he had not one, but two whole suits of like Roman armor. And so he had found this skit that he wanted us to, to do where the, the Roman centurion who was present at Jesus' crucifixion told his testimony. But centurions don't go anywhere without a bodyguard, so he, he roped me in to doing this skit with him. So we broke, <laughs> broke in the back door of this little like strip mall church one day. I think, he had the, I think he had the pastor's permission beforehand. But they were doing Sunday morning stuff, and we broke in and took over the service, and he told this story, and we left. But I got, all that to say, I got to wear, like, real Roman armor. Like, this stuff was pretty sweet. And something that, as we we're thinking about, like, getting dressed, something that, that maybe the audience that, he, that Paul was writing to initially understood, but maybe something that we don't understand, because this, this is not normal. We don't normally wear this kind of stuff, right? Is that you actually need help to get dressed. If you're going to actually be dressed in a way that you're ready for battle, you're going to need help to get dressed. It's, it's odd to consider that getting dressed is a team sport. But we were created for community, and independence is probably the greatest delusion that the enemy has spread among our ranks. That we can do it by ourselves, that we can stand alone. 
That as long as I got my big faith shield, then I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. But I tell you what, one shield by yourself, you want to know how you overcome a shield of somebody who's standing like this? Even if it's a massive shield that's covering their whole body, do you want to know how you get through that? If, there's, like, if this is the shield, I'm shooting arrows, you want to know how I get through it? Got them. Standing alone actually has us at, 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 an, at, uh, at a disadvantage. We actually are, are not just getting dressed for ourselves, but we're dressing one another. We're not just standing alone, just me and Jesus against the world. We're actually locking arms with the other people in combat with us. And we're making sure that the straps of our breastplate are pulled tight and that our, and that our belt is holding the things together that it needs to hold together and that our sword is, is sharp and that we can get it out when we need it. Like these are the things that we need one another for. A Roman soldier didn't go anywhere without his armor bearer. And I don't have an armor bearer, but I got some brothers in arms. We journey together. And it's not a sin to need encouragement. That's what, like, you're like, where, where is all this coming from? I'm going back to the armor picture, but look, I'm sending Tychicus to you guys because I want, I want you guys to be encouraged. You hear that I'm in prison, but I want you to know that it's okay. I'm, gonna, I'm sending Tychicus. He's going to tell you what's going on, and he's going he's gonna to inform you, but he's also going to encourage your hearts. This could be a really discouraging thing, and I want, I'm sending him so that he can tell you firsthand that it's fine, that we are not outflanked, that we are not outmatched, that we are not crushed, but that we are standing firm in the Lord, and that I'm just asking for you to pray for us that we can proclaim boldly the good news that Jesus is still working in the world. We need one another. I need you. You need me. We did the shindig yesterday, and, and I think uh, one of the things that was really cool for me is, like, I, I did not almost anything at all for that. I mean, somebody came up and said, hey, pastor, thanks for putting this on. I'm like, bro, like, I, no, don't, don't thank me. It was the team. The team pulled together, and the team put it, and, and I don't feel like it was burdensome for any one individual. It was us sharing together and doing something and, and trying to shine a light to our neighbors. And it was beautiful. And this, this last sentence, I just want to show you, I don't know how it relates to everything else that I'm saying, but I want you to see it here. He says, peace be to the brothers and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So love from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Be, peace be with all who love our Lord Jesus with love incorruptible. Like, I, I, I know my love. I know my heart. I am incorruptible. And yet he's saying, I'm praying, peace be with the brothers. Peace. Peace be with the brothers. And love with faith from God. So the love that we have back to Jesus is the love we receive from Jesus. And the love that we have for our brothers. So who do we trust to help us get dressed? Kind of awkward, but you know what I'm saying. Don't, take, don't edit this out and, and bring it back. But who do we trust to get dressed? And how are we helping others to get dressed? I think part of it is, is understanding like we're, we're going into combat. And we're going into a combat kind of blind. And by going into combat, I mean we're just going to go stand there. <laughs> right? We're going to stand there against something that we can't see, but we can feel the impact of. So we're going to need to encourage one another. We're going to need to hold fast together and stand firm, rooted and grounded in the love of God that he's poured out on us and is now flowing through us to our neighbors. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus shows himself strong as we dress in his character. Let's pray together. Lord, Lord, we do need you, um, our commander-in-chief. And there are so many times where you, you give orders and we're like, I don't think that that looks right. So Lord, I just pray that you help us to trust you with the things that we can't see. Lord, the things that we're terrified of, I pray that you would overcome. God, uh, would you overcome our own arrogance that we could stand alone? Would you surround us with brothers and sisters who are going to continue to point us to you 
to help us to walk in love and stand firm in love. Lord, would you give us somebody else to care for? Would you help us to see that we need one another and that we need you most of all? Thank you for your mercy and your compassion. You're so good to us. It's in your name that we pray. Amen.